blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For those that are unfamiliar, we believe in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the nine gifts of the Spirit that are given to the body. These public utterance gifts of prophecy, tongues, and interpretation are for edification, consolation, and uh, for comfort. And so if the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us, we reverence that, we receive it, we thank God for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just for a moment, remain standing. Thank you, worship team. I sense the Spirit of the Lord drawing prodigals home tonight. And um, I believe in the spontaneity of the Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit, just as this was unscheduled, not put on an agenda, and yet the Holy Spirit is the administrator of this service. And when He touches your heart and says, go now, you don't have to wait for an altar call. We have no promise that the Lord will tarry his coming until the end of this service. So don't fight off conviction. If you need to come repent and get right with God, you just come, come at any moment. Jesus loved interrupting synagogue services and saying, I know you're trying to go through your agenda, but I feel like healing somebody. He interrupted them in Acts 10. In the middle of the sermon, they started speaking in tongues and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I pray that he interrupts us tonight and you will not delay. Amen. Respond to the Lord. Praise God. I know you've been standing, but would you remain standing as we go to God's word? Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. Um, begin reading in verse 1. What an honor it is to be back here at the Northwest Revival Conference. The theme is I stand firm. And I want you to know that the leadership of this house it has cost them something to take a stand for your generation. They could have taken a stand simply for religious tradition, but they saw a generation that needed someone to take a stand for revival and your generation. There are people that will stand for all kinds of things in religious circles. I preach all over and I've been preaching for a good while now. Brother uh, pa Pastor Christy said that we are old friends. I'm not old enough to be anybody's old friend. <laughs> he says we've known each other for a long time, or at least it feels like we have. I'm not old enough for anybody to have known me a long time. But I have been around long enough to see people fight in church and take a stand over the color of the carpet, the color of the robes the choir is going to wear, what, the, what the, the sound system, the air conditioning. But you have leadership in this house that have said, we want to see a generation brought back to God. And we thank God for that. We thank God for those that have fasted and prayed for this weekend and all the work that's gone into it. We praise God for that. Amen. Judges chapter 6 and verse 1. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. We're reading in the book of Judges, a cycle of people doing what was right in their own eyes, backsliding, God raising up a judge to bring repentance and then to overthrow whatever oppression had come upon them. And they find themselves again in this cycle in chapter six. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. When you come out of the hand of God's protection, you are delivered into the hand of the consequences of your sin. It doesn't mean that God hates you, that he delivers you into your consequences. It may mean that God loves you, that he delivers you into your consequences. Romans 1 tells us that when people knew that there was God and chose not to worship him as God, there's three give-ups. He gave them over to a reprobate mind. He gave them to do what was inconvenient. He gave them up to their own devices. I don't know about you. I don't want God to give me up. Amen. And verse 6, so Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Now they were impo impoverished physically without grain, without livestock. The Midianites, uh, later chapter says there was over 200,000 that came and camped themselves around this place and taken all of their food. But Amos says in the last days there will come a famine, not of bread for hunger or water for thirst, but that we would be impoverished by a famine of the hearing of the word of God. Why did we come in on a Sunday night in mass in our numbers from our different locations? Because there is a 
poverty of soul. There is a poverty of character. There is a poverty of integrity. There is a poverty of revival in the church. There is a poverty of fire. And we are hungry for more than dead religion. It said that they were impoverished. And so God had a plan to turn it around. Verse 9. A prophet arose and this is what he said I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land also I said to you I am the Lord your God do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell but you have not obeyed my voice when God is your God you have no reason to fear anyone but him he overthrows verse 11 now the angel of the Lord well, this is an all capitalization, so I don't know if you can see it in your Bible. In my Bible, the word there, angel, is in capital A, angel. We see several times in the Old Testament where a capital A, angel, is not an angel, but the angel. Zechariah 4 said, I saw Joshua the high priest and the angel of the Lord standing there beside him. That was a Christophany, an Old Testament appearance of Christ. Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord and named that place Peniel or Peniel. He said, for there I met God. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't believe in a created Jesus that showed up in the womb of Mary. We believe in the eternally existent Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. He was working and showing himself. And he said, capital A, angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah. Somebody say, I'm not tired. And it's not late. All right, come on. Which belonged to Joash the Abizrite while he was the son of Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. You are to thresh wheat on a threshing floor which is on top of a hill so the wind has access to separate the chaff from the wheat. But he's scared the Midianites are going to steal his Pop-Tart and so he's, he's toasting his Pop-Tart down in a wine press in a hidden place in the middle of the night in the dark. God said, if you, if you have me, you don't have to be afraid of your enemies. But Gideon was, was very afraid. His whole, his whole nation had moved out of the land and gotten into caves. They were so scared. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. <laughs> oh, we'll have to get back there. Y'all look like you want to sit down. Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? And one verse from the New Testament in Acts chapter 17 and verse 6 but when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. We're going to take a stand tonight. I give you permission to shout amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But just for a moment, I want it to feel like we're in boot camp training to go and to stand for Jesus. So can I hear could I hear a hua on the count of 3? 1 2 3. <sighs> Men of God, would you come pray for the remainder of this service, brother Junior? We're honored to have you here. Would you pray for the preaching of the word? Come ahead, brother. God bless you. Glory be to God. It's happening. And we are ready. This generation is ready. Can we raise one hand up and say, Father, I am ready. I am ready for this generation. I am ready for righteousness. I am ready for you to send me. Tonight, use me, Lord. I stand in the gap. Use me, Lord Jesus. Speak to me. I hear you, Lord Jesus. Speak to me, Lord Jesus. Tonight is my night to turn situation around. Tonight, I will hear you, Lord Jesus, like never before. Tonight, salvation has come. Tonight, deliverance has come. Tonight, 
the Holy Spirit is present and I will not miss it tonight tonight is my night Amen you may be seated I had the privilege of ministering just a weekend ago last weekend with the Great Commission Missionary School um, their retreat um, at Havala um, somewhere over in the mountains over by Mount St. Helens it was wonderful and uh, one of the sisters that came and ministered Sister Michelle is not here tonight is she and, uh, and, and later I was, uh, I was scrolling and one of her videos popped up of her leading on a guitar an outreach uh, camp I think maybe in Alaska or northern Canada or something and uh, they were older older young people teenagers maybe but she was doing a kids song and I just thought maybe just to wake us up y'all might feel like doing it could we have kids church just for a moment Oh, some of y'all look so angry. We are dignified. We are not going to do this. I know. Choreography is a sin and motion songs do not belong amongst us, but I'm going to make you do it anyways. So it goes like this. I actually don't really remember, Sister Jenny. I might need your help. It goes something like, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to need help. Sister Jenny, could you just come sing those, that, that line like right there? Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Okay, how many remember this song? How many remember this song? Okay, so y'all go to backslidden churches too. Okay, uh, I just want to make sure I wasn't the only one that sang this in kids' church. So when do, when do the boys stand? When do the boys stand? On the hallelujah or the praise ye the Lord? Oh, the boys stand on praise ye the Lord. So the girls sing hallelujah. They stand and sing on the hallelujah, and the boys stand on praise ye the Lord. All right, lead us. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. That's it. Okay, but you got to, we're going to stand on our right part. All right, she's going to sing hallelujah, and I'm going to sing praise ye the Lord. And when you sing hallelujah, girls, you stand up. All right, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Are you ready? Grab the seat like you're ready. If it takes you a long time to stand up, your part will be over before you even stand up. You got to be able to launch. Come on, remember when you were five years old and you were like, I get to stand up. Okay, just get excited about it. All right, go, go for it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pastor Christie. You're going to get 37 emails this week. Never have him back. We do not believe in that. I apologize. Forgive me. Do you give me grace and mercy? Can you give it to me? Thank you. Praise the Lord. What's funny about that song is the switch where it goes, hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. So you get in that rhythm, hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. And then it switches, praise ye the Lord. And you're embarrassed because the boys are supposed to stay standing. And then the girls are like, I thought it was the hallelujah part. And the boys are like, no, it's still our part. And some of them forgot and sat down. And if you don't know your part, you won't know when to stand. If you forget your assignment, You'll not know when to stand. Does, does it, is anybody taking notes tonight? Anybody taking notes? Let me, let, me give you, let me give you a life principle real quick. Do you want to know the perfect will of God? Anybody want to know how to find the perfect will of God? I want you to write this down. Don't ever forget it. If you don't have something to take notes with, just write it on your pants or your skirt, but don't forget this truth right here. Anytime you want to know the perfect will of God, but you can't hear the voice of God, then it is the perfect will of God for you to do the exact opposite of what the devil tells you to do, okay? So when the enemy says, sit down, then it's the will of God for you to take a stand. When the enemy says, be quiet, then it is the will of God for you to open your mouth. <laughs> 
Oh, there's a story about a little boy whose, whose parents were saying, go, go to the corner, sit down, be quiet. He was being scolded for something, and they kept telling him, sit down, sit down, sit down. And finally, they had to go and push him physically down. He had a rebellious little Adam nature try, trying to rise up until finally he said, well, I may be sitting on the outside, but I'm standing on the inside. I've been around... Uh, a lot of Christians that never take a stand on the outside for Jesus. But they want to say, well, I feel it on the inside. I feel, I feel, I feel that I'm saved. or I feel, I feel the joy of the Lord during worship. Well, then take a stand. Open your mouth and say something good for the Lord. Don't just feel like coming to the altar. Get up and move your feet and walk and stand in his presence and receive the fullness of what he has for you. The theme tonight is to stand firm. And this last part is to stand firm in holiness. We find that we, we find that the, the cycle of the judges again had come to a place of backsliding until there was an entire generation of people living in darkness. Thank God there was still a prophet in the land and thank God that God had a will to restore them and so we find Gideon who's being raised in a cave in darkness by fearful parents, by a fearful generation, but he knows the stories of what God has done in the heritage of his people. And so he himself is afraid. He himself is acting as a coward, and yet the angel of the Lord shows up and says, behold, you mighty man of valor. See, you don't know to stand if you don't even know who you are. If you see yourself based on your actions, based on your mistakes, based on your failures, then God will be calling to you, come home, my son, come home, my daughter. And you'll say, he must be talking to somebody else because I don't feel like his son or his daughter. He's not going to say, come home, you sinner, because he didn't create you to be a sinner. Robert, you don't know what I've gone through. You don't know how many times I've, I've messed up. You don't know what abuse has come in my life, what trauma, what neglect, what depression. You don't know what drugs I've taken. You don't know what people I've slept with. You don't know what I've done, where I've been. You don't know how I was raised. I don't, but I know how you were created and how you were created has much more to do with your identity than anything you've done since then. God doesn't wait for, Je to, for Jeremiah to prophesy, to call him a prophet. He said, I've been calling you a prophet while I was knitting you together in your mother's womb. Gideon, I'm not waiting for you to act courageous to call you a man of valor. I call you a man of valor because that's what I've created you to be. Some of you say, I'm not worthy to respond in this service. I'm not good enough. I can't live it. I don't want to stand and come and repent because I can't stay standing for the Lord I'm not the right person oh no hear me my friend it's not the hallelujah or the praise the Lord it's your night tonight to take a stand for Jesus my grandmother was raised in a very strict Pentecostal home very very conservative and she said she was 13 years old when there was a tent revival in her town in central Florida she said, I sat there under conviction saying, I want to serve you, but I can't live it. I can't live it. There's too many rules. There's too many things. It's too hard. I, I know I'll mess up. Why should I even start down that aisle if I know I'll just fail when I walk out, the, out, out, of, the, out of the service tonight? I can't live it. She said, and the Holy Spirit whispered inside of her and said, I'll live it through you. She said, I couldn't wait for that preacher to hush so I could get to the altar. Granny, you should have gone in the middle of the sermon. She said when she got to the altar, they used to put sawdust in the altar just so it wouldn't get muddy. And she said, I knelt down on that sawdust. And she said, as soon as my knees touched the sawdust ground, I started speaking in tongues. Why? Because the Spirit is willing to take a stand in you when you're willing to bow down everything that needs to bow down before him. He didn't say, you coward, change the way you are and then I'll use you. He's saying that way that you've been acting is a fake you. Come on, tell your neighbor, don't be fake. Your actions of your past have lied to you. 
It matters not to me if you got high before you got here tonight and if you've been addicted for the last 15 years of your life. God does not define you as a heroin addict. He does not define you as being uh, addicted to methamphetamines or alcohol or pornography or promiscuity. He doesn't define you as that. He defines you as a pre-believer. He's got a name prepared for you in the Lamb's Book of Life. He's got the pen ready right now. He said if they will decide that they are who I've always saw them to be, then they will respond because it's their time to stand he's calling prodigals home tonight and so Gideon responds to this message and then he says he says where are the miracles of our fathers we've heard how God moved for us in days gone by but but what about our generation it's hard to to figure out your place when all the stories you've heard are different than what you're going through. You know, putting together, putting together a jigsaw puzzle, what do you do? You take the lid of the box and you stand it up on the coffee table so that you have something to look at as a reference point when you see the confusion of the pieces to see this is what it's supposed to look like in the end result. But if you're like me, then you've studied the lives of John Wesley. You've studied the lives of Smith Wigglesworth. You studied the lives of Charles Finney, of of David Livingston, of great mighty, mighty men and women of God, but they lived in different times. And it's hard to figure out what your day-to-day puzzle piece is supposed to look like when the lid of your the lid of your box is Richard Vermbrand. When the stories you hear in church is that your, your, your bunica and your buniku were, were standing under communism and they were taking, they were taking great, uh, great pains to take a stand and you're just like going to high school and college and you're like, you know, Ceausescu's dead. I don't, how do I take a stand? He is dead, right? Like, I don't know. He died? Okay. Okay, they... They took a stand during World War II, but but Hitler's kind of gone. How do I take a stand? It's one thing to know the stories of the heroes of the faith, but I'm not a Bedouin living in a tent like Abraham. I'm not not, uh, living in Egypt like Joseph. How do I take a stand for God and godliness and righteousness in 2023? What do I do? Hopefully there's something inside of you. It's one reason I love preaching for for people that have the heritage of God is because there is a knowing inside of you. He has done wonders in your family tree, in the history of your people. He has poured out his spirit on days gone by. Reality is, revival is a reality. And if you know he's ever moved anywhere, then there's something witnessing inside of you. God, it could happen again. So when you have an encounter with God, something cries out, Lord, where are the workings of God that we've heard from other generations? And something of hope says, are you going to do it for us? And he says, I will move when you move in obedience to me. Brother Junior shared in one of the sessions at the retreat last weekend about Mark 16 and the Great Commission. And he said, these signs shall follow them believe. They will cast out devils in my name. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They will speak with new tongues. And he said, but what happens is if you stop moving, then whatever is following you stops. So when those that should be going and preaching and declaring and standing and being a witness, when they stop, whatever is following them has to stop. If we're looking for signs, signs and wonders to start but we're not willing to take a stand and a step of obedience it doesn't work that way we didn't come tonight to follow the signs and wonders but hallelujah somebody's going to take a stand and walk down an aisle and something's going to follow you the call of God the anointing of God amen the power of God to help you live this life of an overcomer but God will only help you as you begin to move in obedience to him hallelujah go ahead Just kneel down right here, brother. Amen. Somebody come help this young man pray. Hallelujah. This is not theatrics. There's no gimmick here tonight. He's not interrupting anything. It is in order for you to get right with God when the Spirit of God moves upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to keep preaching if a hundred of you come. You're not bothering me. Amen. Gideon says, how will it be? How can this happen? And he said... If you are really the Lord, show me that you are. And he brings him something to eat. And all of a sudden it's burnt up right in front of him. 
And the Bible said that Gideon was afraid. Come on, look this way. It's all right. This is, this is called Pentecost. If you've not seen it in a while, this is what happens when the Spirit of God moves. Some are going to be saved and you could be healed in the back row and you could be delivered and you could be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. When the Spirit bids you, it's time to obey Him. Gideon became very afraid of what he had experienced in God. And God said, fear not, Gideon, but go in the power that I'm giving you. Look this way and hear me right now. You will either be afraid of man, you will be afraid of the rejection of people, or you will be baptized in the fear of the Lord. And if you are overwhelmed by the fear of God, you will not have to see whether people approve of you, whether churches approve of you, whether your friends approve of you. You'll say, I'm not afraid of them anymore. I haven't had an encounter with God I have met with him face to face and now I will take a stand even if everybody else is against me you have to be delivered from the fear of rejection of others in order to stay take a stand for God Gideon goes home and God commands him cut down the idol of Baal of your father he cuts down that idol in the middle of the night because he's afraid when he stands in the morning His neighbor said, his neighbor said, who cut down this idol? They were willing to take a stand for what was wrong. They said, we're going to kill whoever cut down the idol of Baal. And Gideon's father came out of the cave, out of the dark, and said, if Baal be a god, let him take a stand against whoever cut down his idol. See, what's going to happen for some of you, look at me right now. What's going to happen for some of you is when you take a stand, even though your parents have lived in fear, when you take a stand, even though your brothers and sisters have given into this culture of ungodliness, when you take a stand against compromise, all of a sudden, even your parents will be the recipients of the revival that you're willing to take a stand for. Hallelujah. Gideon cut down the Asherah pole that was a symbol of sexual immorality. It was the worship of sexual immorality. He cut it down and he burned it. Listen to me tonight. There are things that God will deliver you of and there's some things you've got to cut down yourself. There's a difference between consecration and sanctification. Somebody say consecration and sanctification sanctification is what God does for you consecration is what you do for him he's not going to delete the playlist off your Spotify while you're sleeping he's not going to block those people on Instagram while you're not paying attention there's things you have to consecrate but when you take a stand to do what you can do the Holy Ghost will sanctify you and give you power to say no when you didn't think you had power One of my best friends, Matt Wilson, was preaching this last Thursday night at their youth ministry. He said, I got saved at 17 years old at a youth camp. He said, but Friday night when I got home, somebody invited me to a party. He said, I knew they were going to get drunk. I knew they were going to hook up with girls. He said, the first step was to take a stand in service. But the second step was to take a stand against sin. God gives you power to respond to Christ. But then you have to wait upon the Lord to give you strength to stand against temptation. God said, now blow a trumpet, Gideon, and rouse your generation to war. He began to gather a whole generation to fight with him. I don't know where the fathers and the grandfathers were, but all of a sudden a generation that had been raised in the dark said, we will take a stand with Gideon. And 33,000 young men came to fight with Gideon. And yet he was still afraid. You can have an encounter with God, but it won't last if you don't continue to have an encounter with him. And so while he's battling with his fear, come on, this isn't bothering me at all. This is the way I was raised. The Spirit of God's moving. Amen. But I want you to stay clued in. We're almost through the story of Gideon. Listen, God said, I don't need 33,000. So he diminished them. Who said, whoever is afraid, tell him to go home. Because you will either be afraid of the enemy or you will have the fear of the Lord. Look at me tonight. Are you afraid of being canceled? 
Are you afraid of your friends saying, why do you keep posting scripture on your, on your Instagram? Why do you keep using your social media to talk about revival? Why are you quoting ministers and missionaries? If you're afraid of them, then you're not standing in the army of the Lord. He sent home thousands of people that said, we're afraid to fight. And then the Lord diminished the numbers again by those that lapped the water or those that bent down to drink. And then Gideon was still afraid. He asked for the signs of the, the water that was on the fleece, the water that was on the ground. And then this is the last sign that God gave him. Come on, I'm almost done. Clue in right here. God said, Gideon, go down to the camp of the enemy at night and listen to what they're saying. I don't play video games. I don't, I don't know about that stuff. But I heard about something called proximity chat. Anybody know what proximity chat is? You don't have to raise your hand you're, you, if you're not allowed to play video games. You don't have to let anybody else know around you. Proximity chat, somebody explained to me, is that when you're playing in some player single, blah, 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 you know what, like Fortnite or Call of Duty, that the game allows you to hear what your enemy is saying when you get close. And God activated proximity chat for Gideon and said, go listen to what the Midianites are saying. And when he got close to the tent of the Midianites, he heard one saying to another, he said, I had a dream last night. He said, what was the dream? He said, a barley loaf rolled down and destroyed our camp. See, barley was what poor people ate, not wheat, barley. It was a diminutive, it was a, it was a derogatory term for them to call the Israelites, oh, those poor, those poor Israelites, they can't afford good bread, they eat barley. And while they were saying they had a dream of barley, they knew exactly what that was. That's the Israelites. The enemy was having nightmares. One of the men in the camp said to the other one, he said, that's none other than the sword of Gideon. Come on, look at me tonight. Gideon was still afraid until he realized this. The enemy is more afraid of me than I am of him. See, the enemy comes like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and he's real he's not passed a peace treaty hear me tonight the devil has not passed a peace treaty with God they've not become friends there is still a world of flesh and a devil that wants to destroy you and take your soul to hell and he may roar and say I'm greater and I'm mightier temptations too strong the culture is going to destroy you you'll never be anything for God oh but if you could hear what the enemy was really thinking he would be saying I had a nightmare that they showed up in Seattle and that they responded to the spirit of God I had a nightmare that the power of God began to fill them I had a nightmare that sons and daughters began to prophesy oh hallelujah when you are baptized in the fear of the Lord so that you can take a stand for the holiness of God the enemy will be more afraid of you than you are of him if the worship team wants to come 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal that word carnal means physical we're not fighting with the swords physical swords but as pastor christie said we take up the sword of the spirit which is the word of god the weapons of our warfare are not physical but does that mean they're weak come on look at me tune in every synapse firing this direction right here just because we didn't come in with some some missiles and some atomic bombs does that mean that we are weak Oh no, the Bible says your weapons are not physical, but they are mighty through God. If you're the commander of an army and you said, I have this amount of resources, will you give the big weapons to the people who are not going to stand on the front lines? Who do you give the mightiest weapons to? You give the mighty weapons to those who are fighting the mightiest battles. Listen to me, young man. Listen to me, young lady. 
Your decisions in the past may have said you are weak, weak in character, weak in integrity, weak in willpower to overcome. Oh, but God says, if you will come to me, I will give you weapons mightier than everything you're fighting. Oh, but the enemy's got his sights set on me. He's aimed at me. I think he's going to take me out. Oh, no, friend. God's got his sights set on the enemy at your school, in your family, in your generation, in America, in 2000. His target is to pour out his spirit and to bring revival and you are his ammunition and he says my weapons through you are mightier than the lies of hell mightier than all of the attacks of the enemy his weapons are mighty put on the full armor of God that you might be able to stand that you might be able to stand that you might be able to stand you're going to stand for something you're either going to stand at the wrong time for the wrong thing and sit on the plan and the will of God for your life or you're going to take a stand for the call of God, the anointing, righteousness, holiness. Why? Because religion tells you you have to? No, because the fear of the Lord burns inside of you. I, I, somebody told me it's, it's like football season or college football or something. I don't know anything about sports. All I know is they don't get mad when it goes into overtime. They get excited when it gets late. Somebody say it's still early. All, all I know is I don't know when to cheer. I don't really know, you know, what's going on. All I know is that sometime nobody told them to, nobody programmed them to. All I know is that... 50 year old dads with a bucket of popcorn without anybody on a microphone saying would you please stand to your feet no 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 somebody catches a football and runs it somebody kicks a soccer ball somebody throws a basket and all of a sudden somebody launches up off the couch and is yelling at the screen saying go go why something stood up on the inside God told my grandmother you can't live it but I'll live it through you that's why my favorite verse in the whole Bible is Romans chapter 8 and verse 11 that said it's if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you then the spirit that raised Christ will also quicken or make alive your mortal body. Robert you don't know the pressure on me. Let me tell you about the pressure on Jesus. Three days the weight of death laid upon him. Three days the weight of the sin of all nations and generations held his body down in a grave. Three days darkness prevailed. Oh, but on that third resurrection morning, the Spirit of God didn't cause him to just get up and go to therapy and walk with a cane. The Spirit of God didn't put him in a wheelchair. The Spirit of God didn't give him a walker. The Spirit of God breathed into him and he stood up and he said I didn't get up for me I was already up I came down because you were down and the same power that picked me up will stand up inside of you there's a young lady in here that needs to take a stand against a boy who's provoking her to go further physically than she needs to take a stand tonight tell him it's over you're going to stand for righteousness or you're going to sit down on the plane of God for your life so you can stand for a jerk that doesn't care about your purity. That's not in my notes. I felt the Holy Ghost say, tonight, young lady, take a stand. Take a stand. I can't do it on my own. I can't do anything on my own. I'm helpless. I'm hopeless. I'm asking right before I get up, Holy Ghost, be the preacher in me. Stand up in me. And I'll need him to stand tonight after service. And I'll need him to stand up in me tomorrow. And I'll need him to stand up in me on the airplane. And I'll need him to stand up in me when I'm alone. Hallelujah. He's, he, this is the whole power of resurrection. That he would take a stand within us. Stand with me to your feet. All over this house, let's stand up. In the year 320 AD, the emperor of the east of Rome, after Constantine legalized Christianity in the west, a man in the east said, I'm still going to try to wipe it out. There were 40 soldiers within his army that were known for being devout Christians. 
He said, if you will offer a sacrifice to an idol, I will keep you in the military. I will promote you in your ranks. I will give you land. I will give you titles. And they said, we will not recant serving Jesus. The next morning, he took those 40 soldiers, stripped them down naked, removed their shoes, and put them on a frozen lake in Sebasti, formerly Armenia, now Turkey, 320 AD. He told the other soldiers, prepare hot, a, 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 a hot tub a full of, of warm water steaming on the shores of that lake and tell those men whenever they will recant for Jesus, they can come and sit in the soothing water. Those 40 soldiers stood freezing, singing all that day, singing the songs to the Lord. They saw the soldiers on the shore when they got cold, get in the comforting water and then get back out again. Till finally one of them gave in. History said one of those 40 soldiers said, I recant. He came to shore. They wrapped a blanket around him and he got in the water. But one of the pagan soldiers on the shore said, you fool. And he took off his helmet and he took off his armor and he took off his shoes and he said, I surrender to Jesus Christ. And he walked out and he joined the 39. The world is not waiting for you to go viral. The world is not waiting to see if you can hit the high note. The world is not waiting to see if you'll be a millionaire. The world is waiting for the greatest miracle of all, that God takes a sinner out of the world, saves him, sanctifies him, fills him with the Holy Ghost, puts him back into a sinful world, and gives him the power to stand. Brother Junior seen the dead rise in Bangladesh, but there's a greater miracle than physical resurrection. It is the power that comes from us. It's the power that'll stand up in you every day of your life. I need something to stand when my grandmother dies. I need something to stand when ministers have moral failures. I need something to stand when churches split. I need something to stand when leaders are arguing. I need something to stand when my parents are divorcing. I need something to stand when temptation is knocking. Surrender to the Lord. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and take a stand. Tonight, your night. First, I'm asking if you're here and you're not right with God. I'm not saying you've got a little something that you didn't repent of. I'm talking to people you know you're not serving the Lord at all. Prodigal son, prodigal daughter, come home. Well, I don't feel the strength of the Lord. Command your feet to take a step. And as you step out of your seat, the Spirit of God is going to help you and usher you into the love of Almighty God. If that's you, come now. Come now. You need to get right with God. Step out of where you are and make your way to this altar. One, two, three. Come, 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 come. Why would you come to this conference and not come to the Lord? Oh, we're not inviting you to religion. We're inviting you to the power of God that will rescue you. That will tell you you're a man of valor. You're a daughter of the King. Oh, they're coming, they're coming. Come on, respond to the Lord. If you're here tonight, call number two. Robert, I surrendered to Jesus before, but there's a pattern of backsliding. I keep giving in to the same struggle over and over. I need deliverance. I'm not telling you you have a demon. I'm telling you, you need the power to be an overcomer. If that's you, I want you to come and stand in this altar. Come and stand. I need deliverance. Come, come, come. Don't wait. Don't wait. I need deliverance. I need victory over something in my life. Come and stand. Come and stand. Come and stand. Come and stand. Oh, freedom is real. Freedom is real. Freedom is real. Stand up in me, Jesus. He who raised Christ from the dead, arise within us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're here and you say, Brother Robert, 
I need the baptism of the Holy Ghost to stand as a witness so that the power of God can follow me in signs and wonders. I don't just want to speak in tongues. I want to walk in the will of God. I want to stand in my generation with the authority of Christ. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the Bible evidence of speaking in other tongues. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Hallelujah. There's room on this side. There's room on this side. Come on, press through. Press through. Press through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> oh, God, make this the upper room of the Pacific Northwest. Hallelujah. Robert, are you stirring up an emotion? Friend, I don't know what kind of God you have, but they feel the high of their drug. They feel the depression and anxiety. They feel the panic attacks. They feel the suicidal thoughts. I have a Jesus that's going to cause you to feel overcoming power, to feel the joy of the Lord, to feel the chains break off tonight. Hallelujah. Freedom come into this place. Healing come into this place. Now let me ask every other person in this house. There's not room for everybody to fill this altar, but we can make this whole place an altar right now. Let me ask you, how many say, Robert, I'm watching a world go to hell all around me, but I want to stand in that tide and be a witness for Christ. Raise your hand up high. Raise it up high. You may not go to Mongolia or Bangladesh or India or Africa or China, but God, I want to stand for Jesus. Come on, lift your hands, lift your voice. God, give me power. Stand up in me. Come on, yield to the Holy Ghost tonight. Pray through to the Holy Ghost. Pray through to a fresh baptism. Oh, let the call of God arise within you. Let the call of God arise within you tonight. Oh, arise, arise, arise. Stand up in me, Jesus. Stand up in me, Jesus. Take a stand against fear. Take a stand against the powers of darkness. Oh, there's a generation hiding in the dark. There's a generation hiding in the dark. God, we need someone to take a stand. Come on, behold you mighty man of valor. Stand up, you warrior princess. Stand in the name of Jesus. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand.
I want us to pray together. Hallelujah. There's no magic words, but if you need someone to help you pray, all you have to say is, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy. I'm a sinner. Save me. Wash me. Make me your child. I confess you are my Lord. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, there's no magic words. But if you call on his name, he said, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not about how loud you pray. It's not about how long you pray. He has done the work. You receive the miracle. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let every prodigal be born again tonight. Let every lost son and daughter be born again tonight. Let the addicted go free in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, even if nobody's praying with you, let the chains fall off. Go free. Go free. Go free. Go free. From the front to the back, let the waves of freedom and victory, oh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, stand up in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.